So somehow it's already been a couple of months since Samsung launched its spangly, super premium and super sized new smartphone, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. And it took me this long to review it because frankly the thing so vast it got stuck in my pants. And that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. This Wang and Great blower costs from 1,249 quid, which <laughs> oh, that ain't cheap now, is it? And two months on, it's got competition from lots of other fresh ultra blowers. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra, the Nubia Z60 Ultra, the Izu Zenfone 11 Ultra. No, actually, not that last one. That one's a bit cack. But is this almighty slab actually worth spunking out well over a grand for? Well, I've been using it on and off for the past couple of months and I've had my SIM slipped in there full time for the past week. So here finally is my Galaxy S24 Ultra review and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now at 6.8 inches, the S24 Ultra is only slightly bigger than most of the smartphones. But the difference here is those sharp corners which help this phone to stand out from the crowd not necessarily in a good way. If you tend to use your phone one-handed a lot as I do, you really will come to resent those pointy bits and that sharp bottom edge. The Samsung S24 Ultra sure ain't as comfortable to wield as fellow chonksters like the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And other than the completely flat new display, which certainly gets my spurt of approval, that design hasn't really changed up at all from last year's Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's a simple but smart finish, if nothing to get those fleshy bits tingling. The camera setup is subtle compared with the enormous Jusson protrusions of rivals, but I did miss a camera bump at times, especially with an absolute behemoth like this because it usually doubles as a handy finger shelf and you can't really do that with a Galaxy S24 Ultra's camera. But overall, Samsung's pricey new blower looks and feels as premium as you'd kind of hope it would. And I think a large part of that is down to the fact that it is really bloody heavy despite the new titanium finish. Now this grey colour here looks pretty smart, but it's also kind of industrial. That's my polite way of saying boring as f**k. But you can also grab the S24 Ultra in black, violet and a sort of goldy yellow colour, plus some online exclusives. And the good news is that titanium frame's certainly doing its job well. Those edges are still in perfect nick despite being banged about the place. And it's the same for the Gorilla Glass surfaces, Victus 2 around back and that new armour effort up front. Not a single scratch to speak of that my buggered old peepers can see after two months of caseless living. And in further good news, the S24 Ultra is constructed from more recycled materials than previous Ultras. So if you do stash one of these Herculean blowers in your pants, bag or some other suitably spacious vessel, you can strut around with a suitably smug expression knowing you've probably saved a guppy or two. And as you would expect, at this sort of price, again, IP68 water and dust resistance, so can get very wet, very sandy, no worries. Now Samsung's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra is an absolute banger, as always. Never gives me any jip, even if my fingers are a bit moist, a bit clammy, whatever. And of course, you've always got the face recognition in backup as well if you ever need it. Again, just as nippy and effective. And on the software side, you'll notice quite a few parallels and, of course, as usual, some major differences between the Galaxy S24 series and Google's Pixel 8 phones, especially as Samsung has slapped its own One UI 6.1 launcher on top of Android. But the first similarity is that Samsung is rather joyously offering the same level of software support as Google, seven years of OS updates and security patching. Frankly, if I'm still going in seven years, I'd be absolutely overjoyed. And certainly One UI 6.1 feels really slick and smooth here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. You get quite a few Samsung exclusive features, including a good bit of Samsung DeX, of course. And this just allows you to hook your phone up to a larger display, a TV, a monitor, whatever, and then access all of your apps and files via a proper desktop style experience. Modes and routines is as excellent as ever, especially if you just want a bit of bloody peace. And as always, you've got some excellent security features stashed on here. Some of them built into Android and some of them part of Samsung's own excellent Nox security suite. And then, of course, there's all of the stuff I usually moan about when reviewing a One UI smartphone, such as the way Samsung insists on doubling up on everything that Android does. Which, you know, is fine if you're fully committed to the Samsung versions of all of these things, but you know, I hop around between different Android devices, so I prefer using Google's efforts, which on the whole are slightly better. So for example, while I'm not exactly an enormous fan of the Google Assistant, it's still an absolute bloody genius compared with Bigsby.
And yes, it is kind of like comparing a slap in the face with a kick in the c**t, but frankly, using Bigsby feels like both of these simultaneously. And I, it's kind of impossible to review one of Samsung's Galaxy S24 phones without banging on about all of that AI stuff, which Samsung is leaning into rather heavily. It's once again similar to the Pixel 8 setup and a mixed bag overall, although quite a few of these will be useful to someone out there. Personally, I find the smart messaging stuff to be more unintentionally hilarious than actually helpful. While this generative wallpaper feature is really only good for instantly creating fresh album art for some kind of emo post-hardcore metal band. And that circle to search feature would be more helpful if only it was better at people searches. It could be quite a useful tool for a bit of internet stalking, but you know, if I try doing it on myself, for instance, it just returns pictures of other tired looking bald people. But hey, it does clothes and products really well, so if you want to know where your favourite YouTuber got their t-shirt or pants from, then, you know, job done. And don't bother searching on my threads, by the way, these are just an H&M special. Five T's for 25 pund, certainly the smart choice if you're prone to spilling gravy all down yourself. But anyway, the best AI features are definitely reserved for the camera, but I will be touching more on that later. And you can see more of all this AI shenanigans in my S24 Ultra unboxing, as well as my S24 series tips and tricks guide. Now Samsung's S Pen remains, as always, one of the few reasons to actually upgrade to the Galaxy S24 Ultra from the S24 Plus. This hasn't really changed up at all from the S Pen on previous Ultras, and it's still a really convenient way of signing the documents or just scribbling a quick note, even when your phone is hibernating. Great little tip that is if you suddenly remember something absolutely urgent. And it's also pretty good if you've got an itch somewhere that you can't quite reach. But besides all that, mine most definitely stays lodged in that bottom orifice as I have zero creative talent to speak of. You've got to admit though, it's kind of ironic that despite all of this AI shenanigans, Samsung's built-in keyboard can still be a total f***ing idiot at times. It still absolutely adores changing actual words into complete nonsense. So for instance, you'll write something like unlock and it'll just change it into you lock. And yet whenever you do actually misspell a word, well, that autocorrect is always having a convenient kip. So yeah, one word, Gboard. I've got to say though, a couple of months on, I've been impressed by how rare it is to see any kind of proper glitches or bugs here on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, the bit of keyboard jank aside. This past week, for instance, of using it as my full-time phone again, I had one instance of Google Chrome just completely crashing on me and just a quick restart of that app and it was absolutely fine again. That's the only time I've had any jip from it. And compare that with what I experienced on the likes of an iPhone or something when that just comes out. Jesus, it's a world apart. You got 256 gigs of storage on this minimum, which is the minimum I would expect. Or you can make it rain even harder on Samsung and upgrade to 512 gigs or even a tasty terabyte. And I got the basic 256 model and that should keep you going for a while to be fair, despite the fact I've downloaded Genshin and gone a bit nuts with the cameras these last couple of months. I've also downloaded plenty of Netflixy type shenanigans, which of course naturally looks absolutely friggin' lush on Samsung's spangly new, completely flat dynamic AMOLED screen. It is a big one, of course, but that Quad HD Plus resolution helps to keep the visuals sharper than a sushi knife. You got HDR10 Plus streaming support in stuff like Netflix, while the refresh rate scales from 1 to 120 Hz. Basically, all of the premium guff you would expect. I've had zero issues at lower brightness levels while this panel peaks at over 2000 nits. But the real game changer here is that Gorilla Glass armor surface. Because not only is this thing tougher than trying to get some kip after sinking a dozen espresso martinis, but it also significantly reduces any reflections. And this makes a world of difference when you're using your phone outdoors. And frankly, when I swap to other phones, it's probably the feature that I miss the most. Here in Blighty, yeah, you can live without it, but if you happen to reside in California or the Canary Islands, well, first up, jammy git. And second of all, you'll absolutely bloody adore this thing. And yes, in darker environments, that display effectively dims right down, so us Brits are sorted as well. And aye, that stereo speaker setup is a proper beaster, as you would expect from something this massive, although I still prefer not to use it for music. And as with most flagship smartphones, there's bug roll headphone jack action here, but I found that the Bluetooth streaming has been absolutely flawless. Now here in Blighty, the Ultra model of the Galaxy S24 is certainly a step up from that plus because it's powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 rather than Samsung's own Exynos Silicon. 
and that's backed here by a decidedly tasty 12 gigs of RAM. The gaming experience here is as enjoyable as on other 8 Gen 3 smartphones, with the likes of Genshin Impact playing with a frame rate that stays pleasingly stable, even when you're bashing your way right across the entire map for well over an hour. The S24 Ultra does get a bit warm, even about 5 minutes into a gaming session, which is surprising given the size of the vapour chamber that Samsung apparently mashed into this thing. But it never properly heats up, and there is bugger all impact to gameplay. My only real complaint is that Samsung's gaming mode is still rather basic, compared with what you'll find on some rivals. Oh, and if anyone knows how to actually murder these seemingly invulnerable ghost squirrel gates, then please do enlighten me in the comments. Much appreciated. Fuzzy wee spectral nut lickers. And no complaints with the connectivity either, be it on 5G, Wi-Fi, whatever. I never found myself staring at a loading screen or watching an annoying buffering symbol as I was trying to stream video out in the wild. And as you'd expect from a big old blower, you've got a big old battery stuffed inside, 5000 mAh capacity, so similar to most rivals. And while that battery life didn't impress me quite as hard as the S23 Ultras from last year, I still never struggled to make it through a full day with this thing, happily getting at least 7 hours of screen on time with full on use including plenty of camera play. Should happily make it through a couple of days on a single charge if you are a bit more reserved with your use as well. And when it comes to powering this thing back up again, well, it's 45 watt wide charging, so certainly not the slowest around. Although, once again, nowhere near as nippy as some rivals like that Xiaomi 14 Ultra. And you also got 15 watt wireless charging. I found this works absolutely fine, even on my Google branded Pixel stand. So yeah, on the battery front, all good. As usual, Samsung has reserved its best camera tech for the Galaxy S24 Ultra model. And it's headlined here by a 200 meg main sensor with super quad pixel focus. And I don't think Samsung's camera app is quite as user friendly as Google's alternative on the Pixel smartphones, but it's still pretty good for your point and shoot style shenanigans while offering a decent breadth of alternative camera modes. And certainly if you know your way around the likes of a DSLR, the likes of the Pro mode will come in very handy indeed, allowing you to tweak the likes of the EV levels, the ISO, the contrast level. You can also quickly flick between 12 and 50 megapixel images. And in Pro mode, you can choose to shoot a combination of RAW and JPEG. As if that wasn't enough, Samsung also offers up a dedicated expert RAW mode. This gives you even greater control and for some reason you've also got some astrophotography shenanigans. So yeah, certainly good if you want to experiment a bit more. However, I myself am a crap photographer, and so I did what most people will do on the S24 Ultra and just stuck with that full auto mode. Now, I've seen some issues over the past couple of months, similar to on the Pixel 8 phones, mostly some weird artifacting, and usually when I'm shooting a portrait pic at two times zoom or more. But almost every other time, I get a good looking photo simply by pointing and shooting, even when the conditions are less than stellar. Now when you're shooting a scene with a high dynamic range, a mixture of bright and dark areas, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is less prone now to pumping out oversaturated pics than with previous models. However, it most definitely still brightens up those darker areas iPhone style, so you do lose some of that eye-pleasing natural contrast. And that of course is an area where its big rival, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, absolutely excels. But I found the Galaxy S24 Ultra is just about as hot when it comes to night shots, spaffing out photos with bright poppy colours that again lean more towards eye pleasing than realistic. And when you want to get closer to the action, Samsung serves up a dual lens setup on the Ultra. That's a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3 times optical zoom, plus a 50 meg effort with 5 times optical zoom, which replaces the 10 times zoom lens of previous generations. And this is one of the major reasons besides the S Pen to upgrade to the Ultra over the Galaxy S24 Plus. You can zoom in up to 100 times in total as usual, and Samsung's AI shindiggery once again steps in to artificially sharpen images. So even if you go a wee bit nuts, those pics aren't too fuzzy until you step past around the 30 to 50 times zoom level, which should be as much as you ever really need to zoom in in reality. And now having that 5x zoom lens means when you zoom in just a little bit to snap your pets or your family without getting right up in their faces, you can still expect really sharp, really attractive results, depending on how attractive your pets and family are, obviously. And I certainly reckon that's an improvement. And then the fourth and final lens slapped on the arse end of the Galaxy S24 Ultra is your standard 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. There's no real difference here compared with previous Ultras. 
As usual, you're sacrificing a bit of tone and texture compared with the primary shooter. Those detail levels certainly take a hit, but sometimes those results are worth it. And for your video type shenanigans, well, you can capture up to 8K resolution footage at 30 frames per second on the S24 Ultra. Otherwise, dial it down to the likes of 4K level and you can shoot at 30 or 60 frames per second. Otherwise, Samsung offers up a dedicated pro video mode where you've got all those usual pro controls and a bit more control over the frame rate. As you can see there, you can bump 4K resolution up to 120 frames per second and 8K, choice of 30 or 24. But there's no option here for log capture, unlike the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. So if you're hardcore into your video stuff, you might want to go that way instead. Now using the regular video mode, I was perfectly happy with the results when watching my footage back on a laptop. Samsung's Focus does a great job of keeping your subject sharp even when there's loads of potential distractions floating in and out of frame. And again, dodgy lighting, even in capture, HDR type situations, all rarely an issue. As with other big flagships, you can expect creamy smooth stabilization when wandering about and shooting, even with the super steady feature switched off. Meanwhile, that audio pickup is crystal clear from all directions. And even on gusty days, you don't get much irritating wind feedback. So certainly for shooting those family home movies, the S24 Ultra is well up to the task. And then last up, you've got a 12 megapixel selfie shooter slapped up there at the top of the mighty Galaxy S24 Ultra display. And I, it's perfectly fine at capturing still images of your face, if that's what you're into. Thankfully, Samsung does at least give you the option of covering up most of your visage with animated sh** like this. You can even snap a photo of a cartoon dog doing a piss on your eyeball. Seriously, forget AI, this is the future. But speaking of which, of course, you've got that AI photo editing here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra as with the rest of the S24 series. And it's definitely the best use of AI on this blower as it was with the Pixel 8 phones. So for instance, the generative AI can straighten up a wonky shot that you took after perhaps a few too many beverages, adding in fake details around the edges as it does so, meaning you won't have to crop right in. You can also get rid of annoying stragglers from the background or remove reflections from pictures that you've taken through glass. And as always with this kind of AI type shenanigans, sometimes it is spookily good to the point where you're certain we're gonna all be slaves to robots in a matter of months. And sometimes it's a wee bit crap and just falls on its arse, but it's definitely well worth playing with as it can absolutely rescue an otherwise binnable shot. Now you could also poke the screen when watching back one of your videos and it will automatically turn into slow motion. It does this by basically generating extra frames and inserting them between the actual frames. And again, sometimes this can be pretty shonky, especially if there's any hand movement. It really doesn't like hands. Just AI in general just detests hands. And to be fair, when you've got the option of shooting 4K video at 120 frames per second on this thing anyway, I'd say just use that for all of your action videos. Anyway, that right there in a tasty wee nutshell is Samsung's Galaxy S24 Ultra. Not quite as fresh anymore, it's two months old, but gotta say, I do rather like it in some ways, but I wouldn't choose it as my full-time smartphone right now, not least because it costs well over a grand. Well, I really like the camera tech on there. I still don't think it's the best right now. The likes of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, definitely a step beyond. And personally, I don't get enough mileage out of that S Pen to justify it either. And then there's the fact that it's a big old boxy build with those sharp old nasty pointy corners that jab you right in the fleshy bits. But obviously, if you do adore that S Pen, you like a nice big spacious smartphone, you've got bigger hands than my wee goblin mitts. And you probably get on very well with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Very few complaints in all of the other areas, including the likes of the performance, the battery life, that gorgeous display. And yeah, that's more than enough of this bull northerner banging on. How about yourselves? Have you been using the Galaxy S24 Ultra as your full-time phone? It'd be great to hear your own mini reviews down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.